Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on that later. This is the 3D printed CNC router I built last year, and these are all the upgrades I want to make to it. So I'm going to be tearing this thing apart today, and since I built the whole thing from scratch, hopefully I can put it back together again without ruining it. Let's get started. So to give you some background on this machine, it was designed by Ivan Miranda with the goal of being able to mill aluminum with mostly 3D printed parts. And for the most part, he was successful. I mean, this thing chews through wood and it can definitely mill aluminum too, but it's not perfect. It has several issues specifically with the Z axis that I'd like to upgrade today. First, I'm not a fan of the dust collection assembly. It eats up valuable real estate on the X axis and it makes it really hard to change out bits. So. I got rid of it. I Second, if I tighten the spindle bracket down too much, it flexes the entire Z assembly and causes the carriage to bind on the X axis. On that note, the 3D printed spindle mount bracket is fairly bulky and it makes it hard to push the locking button to remove the bits. Third, or fourth, I've lost track. I don't think I need as much torque from the Z axis as the original design allows for, so I'd like to sacrifice some torque in favor of faster Z movement. I think. Time will tell. Lastly, there is no way to adjust the tram of the spindle besides just like bending it. So I want to try to build in some sort of tramming bolts into the new Z axis. So first off, I decided to integrate directly with the existing drive system on the X axis. That way if I do a bad job of designing it, I can easily swap the old Z assembly back in and have a functioning CNC router again. That means that I'll still have to deal with this GT260 pulley, which is unfortunate because it eats up almost 20 millimeters along the Y axis. Normally, I'd be able to just put the linear rails directly on the carriage plate, but instead I'll be using a frame built out of 2040 aluminum extrusions to get around that pulley. Other than that, the rest of the structure is fairly straightforward. I'll have a top and bottom plate to mount the ball screw assembly to, a plate to connect the spindle to the ball screw nut housing, a spindle bracket to hold the spindle, and of course, the spindle itself. I was planning on just using some aluminum spacers to mount the stepper motor, but I ordered them from AliExpress and they never showed up. So instead, I designed a bracket that will serve the same purpose, but that can be 3D printed. So rather than machining all the plates out of aluminum only to find out that they're off by a millimeter somewhere, I went ahead and 3D printed everything so I could do a test fit, and then I'll go back and try to machine the final versions out of aluminum. I've got all the parts I need here, so let's put it together.
Okay, so I've got the 3D printed version fully assembled now, and amazingly, I got the design completely right on the first try, which never happens. That's not even remotely true. I wasted so much filament, but I think I finally got it. I think what I wanna do now is install this on the machine, see if it works, and if it does, I'll use it to try to mill the replacement aluminum plates. I have no real experience milling aluminum sheets, so I might really screw this up, but let me know in the comments if you have any tips or feedback on the shit show you're about to see. Anyways, let's cut some aluminum, but first, a word from today's video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a company that specializes in prototyping and small volume production, making it the perfect one-stop shop for all your DIY project needs. I love working with PCBWay because of projects just like this, where I'm not 100% sure I'll be able to pull it off, so it's great knowing that, worst case scenario, I can send my files over to PCBWay and let the experts take care of it. They offer all kinds of services, ranging from 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and as you may have guessed from their name, PCB manufacturing, which is a service I use all the time. Their website makes it a breeze to order anything you need from a super simple 3D print to an incredibly complex aluminum part. PCB Ways engineers can help you get the parts you need when you need them without the headache. Huge thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Now let's see if I can successfully cut these aluminum plates or if I'm gonna have to order them from PCB Way. So this is normally one of those moments where a YouTuber does some fancy video editing and cuts some clips together to make it look like the project was a success. Well, it wasn't. It turns out that I suck at milling aluminum. A lot of the cuts seemed to be going really well, but at some point I was losing steps on the X and Y axes, so subsequent operations got progressively worse. There are so many parameters that go into CNC routing that you can more or less overlook for wood, but for aluminum, they make a huge difference. Things like cutting feed rate, spindle speed, lead in, lead out, all of them make a huge difference and I just have too much to learn about this whole process to have completed these parts successfully. I'm gonna have to spend a lot more time dialing in the settings for aluminum, but the good news is that the Z axis seemed to function perfectly with the 3D printed parts. The movement was lightning fast, making everything on this machine so much quicker, returning to the clearance heights during cuts, setting the Z height, changing bits, before I wasted so much time waiting for the spindle to move up and down, and that is officially a thing of the past. I'm also able to adjust the tram of the spindle now in both the X and Y axes, and it seemed to work incredibly well and was fairly easy to adjust. It still seems to have plenty of torque for what I need too, so I'm glad that I went with the direct drive ball screw. All right, downsides. Other than not being able to mill the aluminum, the biggest downside was that it was pretty difficult to get it mounted onto the carriage plate. I ended up having to take the bottom plate off so I could slide the assembly on, which wasn't too bad, but not what I initially planned. The other downside, which isn't really a downside, is that the entire work surface moved forward about 20 millimeters. I can still use the same amount of work area, but it's just forward now. In the end, it sucks that I couldn't pull off the aluminum plates just yet. The 3D printed parts should work just as well as the previous setup, so I'm not losing any performance there, but I'll keep working at it and hopefully I'll be able to replace them with aluminum ones soon. That, or I'll just order some super sexy ones from PCBWay. In the meantime, leave a comment with your best tips for milling aluminum on a desktop CNC router because honestly, I can use all the help I can get. Also leave a comment with any upgrades I should make and I'll be sure to integrate them into this design. Overall, I would call this project a success. Not a smashing success, but a success nonetheless. I'm super happy with the speed improvements and adjustability. This thing can still absolutely chew through wood and the aluminum extrusions should allow for much needed upgrades to the dust collection system. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you're interested in integrating this assembly into your own CNC build, I'll have the free plans linked in the description below. Just the plans for the Z axis. If you wanna build this entire machine, you'll have to get the plans directly from Ivan Miranda because God knows he deserves the support. His channel is bananas. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down and leave a nasty comment. But either way, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Otherwise, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.